The speaker recognizes Representative Barnett. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand today in opposition to House Bill 4369. As a parent, there is nothing more precious to me than my children. So let me put this simply. House Bill 4369 is an experiment on our children. House Bill 4369 establishes a new statewide school district known as the Achievement Authority, with a governing board comprised of seven members appointed by the governor, who then appoints a chancellor. The chancellor has the authority to appoint CEOs, who may act with the same authority as the chancellor, thus setting up a pyramid of appointed officials who may appoint other officials, none of whom are accountable to the people of the state of Michigan, and none of whom may be recalled for if they fail to perform. While this is troublesome, the bill continues to confound logic in several ways. First, House Bill 4369 limits the number of Education Achievement Authority, or EAA, schools to 50. The EAA as a statewide school district already includes 15 schools established in September 2012 under an interlocal agreement and will also include persistently low performing 5% of schools that enter the state reform school district, which is now under the control in this bill of the EAA. That list of schools, often called the priority schools, contains 146 schools as reported by the state superintendent. By my calculations, assuming the 15 current EAA schools are part of the priority list, there are additional 131 schools that will be placed under the control of the EAA, an authority that may have only 50 schools in its district. Nowhere in the bill is it explained how these two numbers are supposed to add up to 50. Therefore, we are left to assume either that the EAA really isn't limited to 50 schools or the list of 146 priority schools will somehow be called to choose the lucky 35 on the list who are forced into this experimental school district. Second, I'm unsure why several amendments were kept off this bill when they were offered yesterday. For example, that an Achievement Authority school comply with other public school requirements for the administration and reporting of state and other assessment for students. That the governing board of the authority conduct public meetings in compliance with the Open Meetings Act. And others that were rejected. Maybe these amendments were not included because House Bill 4369 clearly states that an Achievement Authority is subject to the leadership and general supervision of the State Board of Public Education as required under Article 8 of the Michigan State Constitution. If that is the case, on the day the governor signs this bill into law, I will send a letter to each duly elected member of the Michigan State Board of Education asking them to require of the EAA schools what is required of all public schools in the state. If, on the other hand, this is not the sponsors and supporters of the bill's intention, then it must mean that the Achievement Authority is designed to operate outside the bounds of the State Board of Education in violation of our Constitution. In addition, it would establish a separate and competing educational system in Michigan funded by public tax dollars. And under established federal constitutional decisions, it would become the burden of this state to show how separate means equal when the Supreme Court has ruled otherwise in its landmark 1954 decision in Brown versus the Board of Education. With regard to our precious children trapped in failing schools, we should not toss them into an unproven experiment. We know what works. We have the data to prove it. What works are smaller class sizes, a vastly reduced student-to-teacher ratio, and a requisite number of paraprofessionals to tutor and assist children who are falling behind to allow them to catch up. This is what works, and we know it. So why aren't we following the course of already proven methods and known best practices? That question was rhetorical, of course because what this bill establishes is a third world education model and tosses our most vulnerable citizens into it. It is not worthy of our great state support of public education. 
and I urge my colleagues to vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Barnett.